Welcome to the Spice 110 Motorcycle Review Marathon Series. When I review a bike for an extended amount of time, I make several videos. What I'm doing in this series is taking all those videos and putting them back to back so you can watch them in one sitting. If you enjoy the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to help support this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, links in the description. Also, if you'd like to see some reviews that don't have multiple videos, just one, check out my Motorcycle Reviews playlist. Enjoy! Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to my first ride of the Energica Xperia. This is an electric adventure bike, and I get it. Electric and adventure, they don't normally go together, but we will get into that over the videos. I've got this on loan from English Electric Motor Co for about a week. Thank you so much to them, I'm really grateful for that because it's only thanks to them that I'm able to get hold of Energicas. Now, as usual, I have a first ride, which is this video, which is just kind of riding and experiencing it for the first time. I make other videos along the way, and then I culminate it with a really condensed down, or try to condense it down review, to hit on all the points that people have talked about from the previous videos. As I say, I don't want to give all the top trump figures and all that sort of stuff in this video. I'll do that in the review, but a couple of off the top figures, because, you know, people want to know these things. Power, 80 horsepower continuous, up to 102 horsepower peak. It does quick charging and it will give you somewhere between 200 odd and 130 miles depending on what you're doing. Having had the Energica Eva or Rebelli in the past, if you haven't seen that video I'd suggest you do that because that bike's insane, their estimate, range estimates seem to be fairly realistic for what you actually get. The torque figures of this bike given on their website is a little bit confusing because they've got miles an hour next to them for some reason in some places, but the, the range shown is between 115 and 900 newton meters. I'm guessing that the 115 is the rear wheel and the, the 900 is directly off the motor, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so you just turn it on, wait for it to start up. It's nice and quick. Compared to some other electrics, hold the brake, press the button, and off we go. I love how quick that is to get going. Now, I have had to make one hell of a mental leap this morning with this bike. As you may know, if you watch my channel, I review lots and lots of motorcycles from big, small, petrols, electrics, all sorts of different types of engine. I own two petrol bikes. One of those is a single cylinder, one's an inline four. You ride those completely differently. And I can jump from one to the other, something with a clutch, no clutch, left hand brake, no left hand brake, no problem. However, this time it's like the perfect electric storm. I went from a UBCO 50cc equivalent two wheel drive electric bike to what is one of the most powerful electric bikes that exists. That's a little bit of a jump to do immediately. <laughs> Literally, the last bike I rode was that little 50cc, which would only do 27 miles an hour. And now I'm on this, which will do 0 to 60 in like three seconds or something like that. It has actually got a mechanically, mechanically, electronically limited top speed of 112 miles an hour, which to be fair is probably quite good because it means that you don't absolutely annihilate the battery on this thing and completely destroy the range. Now, oh sorry, there is one more figure I should mention, and of course it's electric and this is an energy because so it's going to be expensive. This is about 27, 28 grand. I think it depends on what specs and stuff you get. Obviously it might be more or less, but it ain't cheap. And if you're like, oh, I'd like some more speed, please. Okay. <laughs> you do have to hold on. However, as I say, I've gone from riding a tiny little 50 electric to this thing, and it's 260 kilos as well. It's quite heavy. It doesn't feel like that, obviously, with it all being lower down. Uh, I need to get used to the feel of this bike in slower stuff, slower country roads, and also because it's an adventure bike, you need to see what it's like in this sort of stuff. Not the ideal conditions, not perfect roads. Roads with a two foot gully on one side and gravel all up the middle. <laughs> I think one of the things that really added to the confusion of switching to, oh my God, no. No, you're right. Don't have a choice.
Ugh. Um, <laughs> this doesn't have a left hand brake. The, the rear brake is on your foot as it should be. Uh, so I've had to go back to used to doing that. I wish it had like special see-through bush vision. Ah, fluff. I'm closing that. Now, I know a lot of people that watch my reviews. Whoa, it's a tornado of flies. A lot of people who watch my videos about electrics. A lot of people don't like electrics. A lot of people have some preconceived notions about electrics. A lot of those are wrong. I have many videos covering those subjects. Uh, and the irony of it is that people said that my video about a certain subject of electric bikes was too long at 30 minutes and you know it's too much science so I reduced it to oh I reduced it to 10 minutes I said if you want to have an argument about these things in the reality of what actually is true <laughs> and provable then go to those videos and discuss it there people didn't do that they went to my video that was 10 minutes long and just started spouting the exact same stuff that I'd completely disproven in that video and the other videos. My point is this, if you don't like electrics, it's fine. You don't have to buy one, but some people do like them and some people will like them. I like them. I'd buy one if I could afford one. I can't. Ow, ow. Stop opening your visor, you fool! Yes, I do believe the front end of this bike slid significantly on brown algae as I drove through it. My trousers are perfectly clean, thanks. So I've gone from 3.2 horsepower to 102 horsepower, and from 63 kilos to 260 kilos immediately. Younger me on this channel would be very proud of where I'm at now and the fact that I've had the opportunity to ride this many bikes and have that sort of a ridiculous scenario come on. It's, it's great. We have cruise control, but just like the Eva Rebelli, it's you have to hold the throttle on right and you have to press the button, but it's so far away but it's difficult to hold the throttle exactly at like 30 and then come over here and press that button. So what I do is I lean over and press it with this one. Uh, you can then press the set button and adjust the speed with this one up and down. I have got giant hands and even... I just want 30. Let's try, try 30. Press. Hold. Did it. 31. Oh, that'll have to do. Right, okay. We can go set. Down one. There you go. Now, as I say, electric adventure bike sounds like a little bit of a confused thing, because it's like, well, how can that possibly happen? Well, yes, at the moment, it's not the best option, necessarily. But did you know in the UK there are currently more charging points than petrol stations? In 2023, right now, and it has been this way for a while, there are more electric charging points than petrol stations. Now, obviously, you don't need as many petrol stations because they don't take nearly as long to actually fill up the vehicle. But as that all speeds up, we're going to be in a situation where this is fine. This bike is super nice and smooth. For touring, this makes so much sense. It's perfectly smooth. Nice big comfy seat. I feel stable and secure. And You know, you're like, I'd like to go a bit quicker, please. Okay. Brakes are immense and nice. It's quite quick, isn't it?
This bike obviously has got traction control, uh, multiple different levels of that. You can also adjust how much uh, regen braking you get. You can also adjust how much power you get, all sorts of things. What's also amazing out of such a powerful motor as this is how controllable it is at the bottom end. The throttle on this feels much more controlled at the bottom end than some of the much less powerful bikes. They tend to just be like, on, go. This you really can creep along. I mean, I'm going to try that actually. This, how slow can you go? Literally anything. Sub one. This is powered. And what's funny is all I'm hearing now is the chain rolling. Oh yes, this is chain driven. This doesn't have a belt. This isn't, you know, hob motor. This is, it couldn't be with this much power. This is big, girt motor and a big old chain. As I say, this is just the first ride. This is literally me, day one, on the bike, just having a bit of fun, seeing if anything jumps out at me. Of course it does, it's quick as hell. Uh, but over the next few days, I'm gonna be riding this a lot and making lots of videos on it experiencing it trying it out in different scenarios and then giving that review at the end so say if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe to see more videos on this bike and if you're going to help support this channel and i would really appreciate that and also get to see videos early join my patron and when i say early at this point in time that i'm recording this there are eight of my next videos on patreon but not on youtube yet which means by the time that the first video on this bike gets to youtube i've already sent it back probably a week ago and the only problem with that is is when people then ask me questions i can't answer them so i just want you to know i can't answer your questions unless you're a member of patreon because of the timeline of bikes coming in and bikes going out and as you've seen i'm getting through a lot ha! okay let's end it there bye bye Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. I have this Energica Xperia on loan from English Electric Motor Co. to make some videos and review on. Today, I'm just going to go to Goodwood and just have a bit of fun on this bike. I fully charged it, I've zeroed the trip, so I'm going to see what mileage I get versus what battery is remaining. So this isn't a full-on, like, you know, absolute maximum range test, but it is just a what does it do in general riding. I've ridden nearly 18 miles, most of that was on a motorway at 70, and I have 89% of my battery remaining. What I can already say from my stint on the motorway is that it was just so comfy and easy and nice to ride. Really good ride comfort from the bike, very, very smooth, obviously being an electric. You've got so much power available on tap that you can just accelerate and get anywhere you need to go when you need to get there. It's just really good at that. Obviously, the only downside is that it, the range isn't going to be as good. I haven't been down to Goodwood for a while. It's a lovely part of the country, so why not come down here and have a little nose around, also see what cars and that are about. Electronic tunnel run. I'll admit, it's not as good sounding as my DR through there. But equally, uh, my eardrums aren't bleeding. Is that a Spitfire? I, I've got to go and have a look at this. They are racing on the track at the moment. I've got to go and check this out. Oh, there's a plane taking off. So, I mean, this is like the coolest place on earth. There's planes and Spitfires and supercars and everything. Someone's out on the skid pan as well. It's all going on today. Woohee! <laughs> okay, so I just saw a BMW spin in front of a Spitfire while a McLaren shot around the side of it. Nice. Don't park there, please. I want to see this. Keep A. You did as well. Now that is an engine. God damn. <laughs> you might end up getting uh, raw GoPro audio. So you can actually hear these. <laughs> Jag.
Mag, BMW, BMW, Mercedes, Mercedes. <laughs> Here comes that atom. It's a great sound of the way past. Oh, it's going in the pits. No, it's not. Oh, it's God damn, that's actually quick. The speed he took into that corner. do need to come down this place more often it is an absolute mecca and you can just turn up and grab a bite to eat have a little look around it's very cool anyway should we do a little bit more exploring out and about oh, what's just happened here is that wheel just come all or like i don't know what's happened there i think his wheel might have actually come off That was a very strange combination of electric bike and siren. What was that? Right, uh, unless I'm going nuts, a stretched Hummer is about to come past. No, it's, it's actually pulling in behind me. Yes, that is a massive Hummer. I saw that and was like, I'm not going to be able to avoid it. I've just got to take that. Jesus. Rims are absolutely fine. The suspension took that quite well. Thankfully, Oz Racing wheels. That was a serious pothole. I think hitting it at speed was probably the best thing to do because it meant I skipped over it more than went into it. Whew. The thing is, if your vehicle gets damaged by a pothole or something like that, you can claim against them, as long as you can prove it. But all they then have to do is come along with some white spray paint around it and say, well, it's there. And then apparently that means you can't, they can't claim for it anymore. 
like you can see white spray paint around a, what was that, about six inches wide or so, about a foot long and about four inches deep. I just, pssst, that's fine there. It is kind of amazing how quickly your brain can assess options in such a short amount of time. Like, I actually did think then, am I going to go around it or am I going to go through it? Well, if I go around it, it's not going to work out right, so just hold on tight and go straight. Boom! <laughs> where am I going? Because I don't think it's where I was supposed to be going. Right, well, I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of filtering in a minute because uh, it's getting on in the day a little bit. That's what we call a mistake. I'm currently going the wrong direction filtering to just have to filter back this way. Basically, I was in the wrong lane and I hoped I could get across, but then there was a trailer and it was like, mm, nah, that's not gonna. See, look, they do hear you or see you. Why? Why must I have done this, you fool? Sorry, I should be talking about stuff, but I really have to concentrate right now because I'm doing the whole going see. Thank you, mate. Why am I not surprised? Professional driver. <laughs> I'm starting to really like this bike. I mean, I liked it before, but there's things about it I'm just really starting to enjoy. It's it's got all of the pros of the um, Eva Rebelli that I absolutely loved. You know, power, decent range, fast charging, the sound, all of the things about it. But this has got the comfort to go with it. And all that storage, you can basically do whatever you want with it. This does have a load of luggage. I don't have it on the bike now, but I do have a video on that. Thank God I don't have it on the bike now because I wouldn't be so happy about filtering with luggage on. Obviously one of the really nice things about electrics when you're filtering on hot days like this is you don't get nearly as hot because the bike's not hot and you're not holding the clutch and you're just rolling the throttle as you need it. So much less effort. And it isn't boring because then it becomes a new challenge of just how smoothly and easily can I do everything I want to do. He's got his feet out. I can't do that, I've got nothing there to put the feet on. Let's see, where are we up to? 30 miles covered and we have 84% of the battery remaining and most of those miles were on the motorway. Oh, I should have mentioned, uh, I'm using this in Regen 2 and Sport Mode. There is an Eco Mode and more Regen and stuff like that, but for riding, for the power delivery and for how the regen kicks in, I really like B2's S. It's because it basically makes it really quick, but the uh, regen braking kind of feels quite natural to maybe uh, maybe an inline four as you let off the throttle, the amount of like, you know, D cell you're gonna get. So it feels predictable and known. Go and see what's going up on the hill. You're gonna cut the corner? Of course you're gonna cut the corner! Not every single moment on a review bike is recorded. I do sometimes even have an entire day where I just go out on the bike, don't take the cameras, and just, you know, really experience it like it was my bike to see what it was like, to give you a better answer when we get to the review at the end. But I can already tell you now before I get to the review, price aside and you do have to put the price aside it is a ridiculously good bike i mean like a, a, as far as the development of electrics has gone the way that they feel this 
feels like the future of, for electrics. You know, it's, it's the most advanced thing I've felt. I love the way that woman just looked at me like, hello, excuse me, hello, could I come through? Hello. I'm not going to do anything until I see you look in your mirror. You are not looking in your mirror. Thanks. Great. Oh, we're stopping now, so I see if I can surprise him. Oh, it's because he's... Oh, she's on her phone! experience of Energica, their range estimates on their bikes are actually very accurate and they give a very wide range uh, you know they say like if you're if you're really going slowly around town you can get like 250 odd miles out of this bike if you're gunning it around you're only going to get about 130 but as you've seen today i've been on motorways i've been going 60 70 in some country roads a lot of filtering and things a bit of on and off the throttle you know we've covered 45.6 miles We've got 76% of the battery remaining, and the estimated range left, and it kind of adjusts it for what you've been riding from what I can see, is 160 miles. So that would leave, lead us to about 205 miles of normal riding. Over the time that I've been riding electric bikes, some of them have made me sort of question some things. And uh, this bike, I, uh, I'm gonna just say it, okay? I absolutely frigging love this bike. With this performance, this range, all of that, I would love to own this bike. Now, of course, I couldn't possibly afford it, so it's silly. But what it is to say is I actually want an electric bike over petrol because of the way it performs. Not about any of the green agenda, as people, some people like to call it, or not because of this is better for the environment or not. None of that. Just forget all of it. It's simply about how it rides and how it makes you feel or me feel it's just so calm you can be larry really larry and you can have some proper fun with this thing but at the same time it's just so chill and yes i do miss the sound of an engine at times but that's quite a cool sound too it's just on you now insta 360 <laughs> well this just died I don't miss holding a clutch in traffic. I don't miss the heat of the engine. I don't miss having to put fuel in it. I love the fact that I plug this in and every morning it's at 100% and I can just go out and have fun and I don't spend any time going in petrol stations. The saving of money, all of these things, I love it. Now, the saving of money is in the context of me as a reviewer who isn't buying this bike and is just getting to ride it around and me not having to use my petrol bike and I can just charge it on electric means I'm paying a lot less to ride this. So I'm not saying saving money to the end user necessarily because, you know, this is 30 grand basically. Well, it's actually a little bit less than that. It depends on what spec and stuff you get from the looks of it. And it's a lot of money. But that doesn't mean now I'm like, I'm an electric man. I just like electrics. I don't like petrols. No, 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 no. It goes this bike, then all loads of petrols. And then at some point there is another couple of electrics in there. Ironically, they're the smaller CC ones because that's what small CC electrics are really good for. Just tons of torque, tons of fun, not a huge amount of top speed, and you just get to buzz around and... Yeah, you've seen my videos. Watch my review on the uh, Zero FXE. It's a perfect example of a lightweight bike with enough power. Right, well, as I say, as I'm running out of battery, well, it seems, because I've been out for too long, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see some more videos on this bike. As I say, when I review a bike, Basically what I do is I make a first ride and then I make lots of other videos on the bike and then it all culminates together for a review at the end. The idea is that those individual videos are still watchable. There could be standalone videos of, that you can watch, but if you want to know really about the bike, if you want to know everything, if you're actually thinking about buying one of these, start with the first ride, watch through all of them. If you want to support this channel, you can do that through Patreon. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, until the next one, bye-bye.
Don't worry, I haven't forgotten to give you the final range results. So we covered 58.7 miles. We had 70% of the battery remaining. Most of those miles were motorway and national speed limit. So that's pretty impressive. I haven't charged the bike yet, so I'm still riding it. I'm up to 77 miles and I have 59% of the battery remaining. So I'm going to keep riding it and just sort of see what range I can get. That information I'll give in my final review. That's a lot of storage. Hi everybody. Um, <laughs> I've got this Energica Xperia on loan from English Electric Motor Co for about a week or so to do some videos and a review on. I've already put up my first video and when they delivered the bike, it had the luggage on it. Now for me, for my uses, I'm, I don't need the luggage and I'm not really gonna have it on the bike at any particular point. And when it comes to the review of the bike, I realize that this is really important to people who are interested in a touring bike. So instead of taking up lots of time in the review to show you the luggage, I thought, why don't I make a standalone little video where I show you the luggage and go for a little ride. And then when I do the review, I can be like, hey, if you wanna know more about the luggage, watch that video. And now my gloves are broken. I'm, I'm having fun lately. Right, anyway, the luggage on this, it's 112 liters between the three boxes, which are all removable and have quite a neat feature to them. So uh, let me just show you. Obviously you use the key, open the flap like any, and then you've got these on the side, they've got a button you press on the bottom, and then it lifts up and you have your top box. These have also got, I don't know how many sets of gear do this because I'm not about touring myself, but that's why I say, that's why I'm making this video standalone. You can move those clips I just moved. So instead of the whole thing hinging, it's just this little top piece which you can lock down you know that makes a lot of sense you can get in and out there if you just want a few bits or also if it's raining you might be able to get something out without making everything else in there wet so yeah that's that i i don't actually know how much these cost it's energica i imagine it's probably very expensive uh, but then luggage is also dramatically expensive i've found uh, yeah same system on here you can do that whole deal so you only open up the top bit. And then to remove them, you just press the button at the back and then lift up and it comes off. And that is your case. Appears to be aluminium skinned on the top, plastic everywhere else. As I say, it fits onto these racks. You've got the bobbins here. You've just got to put those onto there and then click it in, lock it. Secure, it's not going anywhere. So the rear one takes a real press to get it to pop off and click on. That may be to do with this individual case or just because of you want that one to be so rigid. I think actually what it is mostly to do with is there's some... Uh, no, I'm going to undo it because you need to see under here, don't you? Hold on. Push down. Yeah, push down and press. That helps. Ah, there's your plate. It's got these rubber points to stop it vibrating. And I think it's because of the amount of force that they get put on them because obviously you put it back in first and then you need to close up the front. <sighs> Actually, that was a bit easier. Maybe it just needed freeing up a bit. But yes, that is the luggage that you can buy for the Energica Xperia. Now I'm just going to go for a ride, have some fun and buy some food and stick it in there and bring it home. Obviously, if you're a shorter rider, you're going to step on the peg and step over the bike. It's the easier way of getting you around luggage. But I am actually able to do that. <laughs> My foot just fits. So as long as you're flexible, even if you're slightly smaller, you'll be able to get your leg over. Now there is something that's perplexing me. This bike has a cubby hole here. And I don't know how you open it. There is another thing actually to point out that will be very relevant to people who are doing touring and have a load of stuff in the back of the bike if it's heavy. This bike has got reverse and a slow speed control mode. So you turn the bike on. Hold the brake in. Press the button to make it drivable, see? Now, if you press and hold that, we get reverse, look behind. So you can reverse the bike. And this has got loads of torque, so we had to like, pull you up a hill a bit. Uh, should we try and do that there, actually? And I'll show you, to see, the forward slow, literally, it's not gonna go quickly. It's designed for moving the bike around in a car park or something without worrying about grabbing a whole load of throttle. See, I can, I can reverse up that, no problem. And then to change it back again, you press and hold it. And there we go. 
Just going to double check these are all locked down properly and they're not going anywhere. Because I don't want to send one of these cases down the road because, as I say, I'm absolutely positive they're not cheap. <laughs> the bike night has begun. Does that help at all? Not really. In fact, I may have made it worse. I'm too tall for these things. It will be interesting to see, though, how this bike handles with weight in that top box, because that top box is about four and a half foot in the air. It's a, it's a good way above the bike, so it could impede a lot of, you know, leverage on the bike. But with the battery and the motor on this bike being so low down and it weighing 260 kilos, it might not have a noticeable difference. But I guess with the fact that this is electric, no gear selection, tons of power from the bottom end, and I mean tons of power, ridiculous amounts of torque. This is actually very easy to ride. It is very windy today. It'll be interesting to see if I notice any more sort of push from the wind with these boxes on. I imagine probably not, because 260 kilos of bike doesn't care. As I mentioned in my first ride, the uh, throttle on this is more fine controlled down the bottom than some like 50cc 125 electrics with nowhere near the amount of power. This thing can crawl at zero to one miles an hour or sub one, basically. It can go as slow as you want. Oh, I just went round that and didn't even think about the pannier with that bollard. That's what I mean. That's the sort of thing you can do and not think about. But bam! Lest ye not forget, was it a, a Kawasaki review where someone was going round a, a dock, caught it on a bench, bike and him fell into a boat? He broke his leg, poor guy. Right, I'm going to stick the... Cool, God, hang on. I forgot I did that to it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Other way around, like that, and then... I, d I don't even know, but it's close enough. It looks like it goes in a certain way, but that's what I'm going to do. Ow! Top tip, do not put your finger through the hole and press it, because it will just mouse trap your finger like this. Eh. Do it from there. Right, this is the one that I do want to... Do that with. If anyone says anything about uneven loading, get real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this bike is so heavy with all those pot noodles and light things. I'll have to use reverse. Ah. Honestly, reverse seems dumb until you need it. If I go down here, I might actually get the opportunity to go around a corner at more than one mile an hour. Or not. Mm -hmm. Front front of that car, I was like, don't take it off. <laughs> I can't say that I've noticed any difference. I'm also obviously riding so I uh, actually get home with intact food. I can hear the coke sliding around a bit. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not a lot of weight. You're not surprised, neither am I. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here, and if you want to uh, help support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon, links in the description. You know, it's less than a, a decent DVD a year, and you get all my videos early, ad free, you can get on my Discord, and you make this channel possible at all. So, please consider it. Till the next one, bye bye. Hey everybody, welcome to the video. As you may know, I have the Energy Kit Xperia on loan from English Electric Motor Co. to make some videos and a review on. Now, the way I do my reviews is slightly different to some, many, 
is that I do a whole series while I have this bike for about a week, 10 days, something like that. I have a first ride, which is about my sort of emotional reaction. I have videos in the middle, and then I do a review at the end, which is a condensed version of all the information I've found through the previous videos. But people can go and look at a video if they want more information in, it, in, in any aspect of what I'm talking about in the review. Now, because I want to cover the UI and all the dash and everything with this in great detail, I've realised this needs to be a standalone video, otherwise my review will be way too long. So what we can do in this video is take a look at the bike, point out where all the bits and pieces are, how you open secret cubby holes and all that sort of stuff, because I don't get user manuals when I'm giving these, and there's no way of me finding out what buttons do what, and not necessarily is it ever labelled that well. But I've worked out most, if not all of it, so far. First, I'm going to start with a physical look over at the bike, and then I want to go and find some shade so I can show you that screen more clearly, because if there's anything on this bike I'm going to criticise, it would be the UI. Okay, well, let's start at the front. So we've got a 120-70-17 front tyre. That's a Pirelli. The rim is OZ Racing. Sorry if, I, if you want me to say OZ Racing. It just doesn't sound as good to me, but whatever. <laughs> uh, we've got 330mm Brembo discs. Well, I assume they're Brembo discs. Brembo brakes. 330mm discs, which are huge and four pot Brembo calipers, so we'll see times two. That's why this bike has got so much braking force. Forks, I'm not actually sure who they're made by, but they have got adjustments on the top for both of them. Looking in from the front of the bike, we've got the Y splitter for the front brake lines, and then you can see the radiator there, obviously the batteries behind that bit. Headlights, LEDs, this has got the cutest face of any motorcycle in the world with its little look, cheeky grin and big eyes. Then coming around this side, the screen, that's its low point, that's its high point. Not a huge difference, and for me as a tall rider, I actually keep it down because I prefer having clean air in my face rather than turbulent coming off the top of that. Coming down the bike, the battery is in this part here. We've got the motor here, which is absolutely massive, and this says danger, high voltage, contact may cause electrical shock or burn. When something's got a big danger warning on that, you know it's a good thing. Uh, rear brake is here, pegs, this is all very nicely made stuff. Brembo rear brake with a 280 disc on the back and a two pot uh, piston caliper from the looks of it. Pillion pegs down here. Uh, the, this rack on the back of that is to do with the luggage and I have a whole video on the luggage of its own. So I mean there's so many things with this bike. Try this frame up here you can see the uh, danger orange snakes through there. Now something that did confuse me on this bike was where do you charge it? Where is the plug? Because on the Eva Rebelli that I've also reviewed, have a whole series on, check it out, uh, the seat pivoted up, if I remember rightly. However, on this, it's just this flap here. And as you can see, you've got your standard charger there. This is one I've been using from home. And then if you want to use one of the charging stations with the much faster chargers, you've got the bottom half that you can un uncover down there. So that is where it is. It's got these little rubberized covers, which have to go on in that order. And it's just under there. We do have the same flap on the other side, but on this one, it has... Uh, I think that's the, like, diagnostics plug-in. But that's all that's there. Again, more orange danger snakes. No foot controls on this side, obviously. Uh, Chain-driven with a sprocket. It is quite a large sprocket, looking at that. Probably 50-something-odd teeth. Can I see... Eagle. I mean, it's a nice-looking sprocket. I'll give it that. Make a lovely clock. <laughs> I used to make clocks out of uh, sprockets. I have not found out how you remove this seat. I am under the belief maybe it is a case of unbolting. I don't know if I fully believe that. But I have not been able to find any keyholes, or actually any way that you remove it in the first place. So there has got to be some way of doing it. This has got a keyed ignition, which is absolutely fantastic because I don't like the wireless systems. Now, here's another one. I was aware that there is a cubby hole underneath here, but I could not work out to get to it. So I just sat there one day holding buttons until something happened. And I remember there's this one on the back here of the switch controls, which I'll get to later in this video. Press and hold it. You hear that noise, this pops up. And then in here, you have your charger, right slap bang in the middle. There's also a USB charger over there. Uh, this is the bike charger, obviously. Now. There is space all the way around, it's quite deep, there is quite a bit of storage space there, but the opening's not very big, and obviously with that in the middle it seems a bit silly, but the alternative is that they just made that a permanently closed thing, and you've lost all that space. So, to me, that makes sense. 
I'm going to move into the shade somewhere so you can see the screen better so I can talk about the UI, but you do need to know about the controls on this bike so you know what I'm going to be using. So on this side we've got horn indicators and this is your mode paddle for left and right to select things. It being where it is next to the indicator and feels very similar can cause problems in the fact that you can go to indicate and select the wrong mode. If it was your bike, you had it for months, maybe you wouldn't do that. Um, but I have found myself doing that a few times. Pass high beam, low beam switch here. And there is another trigger switch on the back here that says set on it, which is the same as this set button over here. Although I don't know if it does the same thing. No, because that didn't make that open. So there you go. This is your cruise control button. The way this works is you can be at whatever speed you want to go. You press and hold it and it will keep to that speed. Now it's so far away that it is quite difficult to actually be holding the throttle naturally and getting on that. So I tend to bring my hand across. Once you're on that, you can press and hold the set button and click left and right with this and that will go up and down miles an hour on the cruise control. With the cruise control, you can get on the throttle, go faster, let go and it will slow back down to that speed. And if you want it to stop at any point, you tap the brake. Okay, I now need to find somewhere shady so I can show you this screen and all the menus and the stuff on it more clearly. But just know the way you control everything on there is with the mode button, which is left, right and press. And also that trigger on the back here, lower down, which allows you to go back, basically. Took me a while to find out how to go back. It was, yeah, I could see this bike being very frustrating if you don't get a manual. And there's, there's nothing online I can find to uh, give you any idea. Right, I'm going to go find somewhere shady. Okay, time to talk you through the screen because there is a lot to it. I'll try and keep my hand out of the way. Uh, okay, so we've got time up here, temperature. We've got a menu and some options here. Odometer and your trip here. Battery remaining. Uh, this appears to be an estimated range. This is a temperature gauge. This is saying about what traction control you're in. What level of regen braking you have. What mode you're in for the bike. Then you've got the RPMs of the motor, the speed of the bike. And I think that's draw maybe it's like it's a bit difficult so that is so there's quite a bit there now this is where my complaint is with this bike it's just a bit finicky trying to select anything and do anything so by pressing this once and then pressing right we can go through the different areas of the screen there's, as i explain it it's going to make perfect sense but when it comes down to actually doing it it can be quite frustrating so let's say we needed to change the regen, we would go across to this one, select it, and then we can go left and right to go through. So we got no regen, one, two, and three. Three is quite aggressive. Two is about like an inline fours engine braking is. One is a bit less and zero is off. So I like it at two, it makes the bike feel nice. Now, if you go across to the modes and actually select them, it'll tell you what you've got. So you've got sports, brake, three. But when you do, oh yeah, it changes it every time and I have to change it back. For that reason, uh, you have actually got custom settings, custom one, two, and I think you might use an app or something to set up, and I didn't do that. What's you? Urban. Okay, so yeah, this is the different modes. Urban, oh, but I'm using the, the clicker on the back here to go back. Although that's not working here, so I have to select. So W is wet, E is eco, S is sport, U is urban, and then you've got your three customs. Now, as I say, what I like is... Yes, I want that. No, I want that. This is what I mean, right? Select, yes. Now now press it, get back. There we go. Now I can go to here and I can tell it to be two. And there we go. It's just a bit of a faff. Okay, so now what I want to try and do is go to this one because in here we can have a look at, right, so you've got diagnostics, diagnostics, vehicle status, status, okay. Is that it? Okay. And you press this one on the back, not the pass light switch, the one below it, to go backwards. Then you've got preferences like languages, display, lights. As I say, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. But as you can see, it's a lot of customization there. Back, back. Back, back. If you want to, for instance, clear your trip, you need to go over to this, press the button to go onto it and press it again and it will zero. I don't want to do that right now because I'm doing a bit of a range test. And look at that, I've done 85 miles and I have more than half of the battery remaining and a lot of that was on the motorway and I've been gunning it around on this thing because it's fun. Anyway, uh, moving across, is that all of them? Right, that's all of those ones. So then we come back, so we're not in anything, and then we click across. Now we get another subset of menus. This one is about our consumption, torque, kilowatts, and all that sort of stuff, which can be live as you're riding along. The next one 
Now this is where you have to select it again to get your different options within this. Uh, this has got drift angle sensors. Now I don't know if these actually function when you're out of this window, because I've looked at the, hold on, there's also slope. I've looked at lean angle sensors. Yeah, this might reset, because I had it in the like 30s at one point, and this is obviously reset, so I don't know if this actually does track your true maximum leans, because it seems to clear it itself. I, I, and it also doesn't necessarily seem to track unless you're in it, but if you are in it, it will live give you... I mean, I was up to about 30 degrees. What's 30 degrees? Oh, you are kidding me. I had no idea I was that far over. Wow, that actually puts things into perspective. But anyway, it's got that, which is quite cool, but I can't tell if it actually tracks when you're not in that screen. Right, okay, let's go back in. So you've got consumption, you've got those three screens. As I say, you select, go down to, oh, that's how you can uh, reset it. But I haven't reset it, and I was, as I say, I was much higher than that. Yep, and then you can go back, 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 oh, then across, sorry. And there we go. So you've got a okay and a back, left and right, to control it, which makes sense. And as I've shown you, it kind of makes sense, but it's just the, the way that sometimes you can go back this way, and sometimes you have to okay to go forward. It doesn't fully make sense at times. Um, but then again, you don't really play with it that much. I'd put it in... If you own one of these bikes, put it in B2S and just leave it. It's the best it can be. Wait, how do you put the hazards on with the indicator? This is a perfect example of what I mean. It says left and right, and it says hazard. There is no right. So that is left. That is right. If we hold it there, nothing. Press and hold to cancel. There we go, press and hold the cancel in the middle and that's where you get hazards. That's what I mean, there's just little things like that you have to work out. If you've got the manual, it will be a lot easier for you. So here is your start, stop, kill sort of button. Uh, and if you want to start the bike, you have to hold the front brake in and press the button. If the side stand is down, it's going to say kickstand down, please, blah, 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 blah. So put it up, that's going to auto skip. Then we, again, press the brake in, press and hold the button. Green light comes on here, we can now ride. That's at full power. If we now hold the brake, hold this again for a couple of seconds. It says reverse, look behind. Now this will go into reverse and it's slow. Like that's its maximum speed. And that is really helpful actually because it can pull you up some uh, gradients or if you've got a load of stuff on the bike, it can make it a lot easier to move this bike and less likely for you to drop it because you can get your feet either side of it and you can restabilize really it. Same as then press it quickly. That gives you forward. And you see, this is five, four or five miles an hour. So if you're needing to move the bike or anything like that, or even if you're off the bike and you're manually handling it and it's just really heavy to push, you can use this as an assist to help you move the bike around. Then if you want to go back to drive mode, press and hold it, and there you go. That, as far as I can tell, unless I've forgotten something, oh, there is a USB charger down here as well. I missed that earlier. That is all of the controls and the looks and the functionalities and the bits on the Energica Xperia. As I say, my only complaint with this bike, other than the fact that it's expensive and I can't afford it, is just the UI. It just needs polishing, just a more consistent forward-backwards sort of thing that might actually give you some warning. Now, as I say, if you want to see lots more riding on this bike, I have the first ride, I have me going to Goodwood and all the exploring there and all the other videos I filmed along the way. And then it all culminates at the end with the review and then I can refer people back to these sorts of videos for more information without making my review so long. Makes sense, right? If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel to see more of the reviews I do, please do that. I don't just do electrics, I'm just on a little bit of an electric uh, phase at the moment because when I, <laughs> pun intended, but not intended actually, <laughs> when I have one bike dropped off, they then pick up and drop off the next one, so it means I go electric back to back to back, but I don't think I have another electric after this, and I'll be going back to doing petrols big and small. And so if you want to help support that, see videos early, and at the point of filming this, I have 10 videos ahead on Patreon that aren't yet live on YouTube. I've made 20 videos in the past 30 days. I cannot release them at that speed. So that's why it's good to have Patreon for people who want to watch them at that speed and support the channel. 
And it was at this point I had some audio recording issues. So this is future me. Find links to Patreon below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. As you may know, I have this Energy Xperia on loan from English Electric to make some videos and a review on. Today I want to talk about the Xperia and range, because obviously with electric bikes, range is a massive deal, and this is kind of impressive. So, so far, I have been in, and I'll make it clear, I've been in sports mode, the absolute power mode, this whole time. Regen's only been on two, not three, which it could be higher. And I've done 98 miles. And that's motorway miles, national speed limits, me zipping around on it, not trying to be nice to it or trying to get extra miles out of it. I've been riding it for fun. And I have still got 43% of my battery remaining. It's estimating about 75 miles left-ish. I mean, that does change depending on how you're riding, so I don't know what exact end figure will be. But that's, that's not far off of 170 miles. Like, these are really impressive numbers considering how quickly we're getting along here because it used to be terrible now this is definitely usable and don't forget this bike can charge from zero to eighty percent in 40 minutes again still not as quick as a petrol refill but we're getting much closer english electric told me that they managed to get 140 motorway miles out of a charge which again is damn impressive because the faster you're going the more energy you're going to use However, continuous power is better than constantly squirting up to a speed and then stopping, then squirting up to a speed and stopping. It's all a bit of give and take, you know. But, point is, people are concerned about range. On the Xperia, I think they're getting to a point that, for most people, that would do. And the thing is, remember, that if you charge it overnight in your garage, every morning you've got 150, 60, 70, which let's say 150 to 200 miles of range, every day available to you. I know a lot of people go touring, I know a lot of people could do long rides, I know they like going on long weekend rides, and I know some of you do multi-hundred mile weekend rides, but I have a feeling for a lot of people that would actually be fine, you know. For comparison, my DRZ does about 110 miles to a tank, there's a 440cc, with a 10 litre tank, uh, my XJ6 does about, now they claim online about 200 miles, I've never actually tested that theory because I don't pay attention to it. Unlike my DR where I actually have to count the miles because it doesn't have a fuel gauge. With the XJ, I just look at the fuel gauge and fill it up when it needs filling up. Now again, I'm not being kind to this bike by coming to a hilly area because hills kill electrics too. Oh yes, this is the mud and algae road, isn't it? Do, do not drop this bike. I don't care if I'm going ridiculously slow, having nearly <laughs> dropped this bike on algae down here a little while ago. Hello cows! And also railing this thing over a pothole. Thank you English Electric for being understanding about that. I mean, they get there's nothing I could have done, but, you know, they were more concerned about me than the bike. Just expecting a car, tractor, cyclist, horse, something around any of these corners at any moment. Or maybe these people's dogs. <laughs> Remember that video? Watch out, birdies! Oh, wait a minute. Have they swept the gravel out of this road? They have, finally! Oh, my God! There's normally a thick, thick line of gravel and just broken glass and screws and horribleness up the middle of that road. They've actually cleaned it out. They've obviously done that when they did all the fly tipping pickups because I've just noticed all the fly tipping stuff is gone too. Looks like it wants a fight. You want a fight? As today is such a lovely day, I'm just going to go down to Portsmouth. I'm going to ride around a bit. I'm going to ride back home. And I'm going to see what my end mileage is at the end of it. Now, I can't go down to complete zero with this bike because this bike actually needs a software update that there is a risk that when I get down to about 8% uh, of charge, it might think that's the last of it, rather than giving me that last few miles. So rather than risk that, I'm going to only get down to like 15%, uh, and I'll make sure I'm near home by that point.
Oh my God, it is boiling. What does it say? 29 degrees. It is 29 degrees. Oh my God, imagine how hot I'd be if I was on my XJ6 with that inline four engine underneath me, cooking me. Oh my God, it'd be hell. I, mean, I have noticed that nearly every single motorcycle rider I've seen today is not wearing any gear. Where are we up to anyway? Um, 107.3 miles covered and 41% of my battery remaining. Yeah, that battery isn't really moving much because it's sort of going, oh, you're actually just going 30 now. Oh, okay, everything's fine. Rather than making this video overly long, I'm going to turn the cameras off, put some music on, ride around, crank that mileage down a little bit more, and I'll catch up with you in a bit. But we're currently at 109.1 miles covered, 41% of the battery remaining. That means you could basically refill this battery in about half an hour on a quick charger. Wow. Maybe they're not the last bit because you have to balance, but that's getting a bit too technical for now. Okay, well, some time and some miles have passed. We're up to 121.6, and I have 36% of my battery remaining. I am nowhere near home, and I have no range anxiety whatsoever. I know I'm going to be fine. In fact, I'm going to go up this way a little way, have a look down there, and then head back my way. Okay, everybody, it's been a long while. In fact, I ended up going home having some lunch, and I came back out, done more miles, went off the island, came back on the island. I've been all over the place and I'm calling it now because I cannot spend any more time on this bike today. This bike will not die. So I'm up to 165.9 miles with 17% of my battery remaining. Now again, put it into perspective, it would take 40 minutes roughly to get this thing 80 to 100% charged. 40 minutes. I'm absolutely stunned. I remember that when I had the Eva Rebelli, I got to 107 miles and I had 24% of my battery remaining. And I'm up to 166.3 and I've still got 17%. Also, performance. Haven't noticed any difference whatsoever. It still feels just as quick as ever. And lots of electrics turn that down. Not noticed that with this. I wouldn't even care if it did. You never use all of it anyway, but it, I don't feel like it has. It's also giving a suggested range of 31 miles. So that would take us up to nearly 200 miles of only sport mode with motorway stuff and me gunning it around. What's the actual... Now, as I say, English Electric got 140 miles out of it on a motorway. Now, that makes sense because that is 70 miles an hour the whole time. You are really, you know, pushing against wind resistance. Remember that as you increase speed, wind resistance uh, 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 squared or whatever it is, it, it increases a lot. So 140 miles on a motorway is pretty damn impressive, but for normal riding, I didn't even use the urban mode. This was in psycho mode. It's still in psycho mode. But yeah, I am massively, massively impressed by this bike in, in many different areas, but man, I know it's very expensive, but for a lot of people, who are kind of like, not completely against electrics, but are like, no, I need more range than that. If you said to them 160, 170, 180 miles riding normally, and it will take you an hour to fully recharge it, around, depends on balancing, I think they might be quite okay with that. So I can now give you my final range result. As I say, keep in mind, the entire time I was in sports mode, I was not trying to be nice to this bike, I was actually riding it for fun, squirting around on it, which is the worst thing you can do. Also note, I started this range test at the beginning of the video where I went to Goodwood. I basically had it 100% that morning and didn't charge it again for a couple of days. And I went on motorways, up and down hills, I was flying around on it, I was going on 30 mile an hour roads, I did a real mixed test of riding how you would and actually having fun with the fact that it's an electric and my total end result was 170.6 miles on a single charge that is pretty incredible i know this bike is very expensive but this is the pinnacle of electric bikes i don't know of anything out there that can get that sort of range with those modes if you enjoyed the video hit the like button i would very much appreciate that subscribe if you're new here and if you want to see more videos on this bike i've got a whole review series i'm doing my next video on this bike will be the actual review so catch me for that one if you want to help support this channel you can do that through patreon i really do appreciate the support thank you to the people who have recently joined uh yeah catch you next time bye bye
Hi everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to my review of the Energica Xperia. I've had this bike on loan from English Electric Motor Co for about a week or so to make some videos and a review on and I have made some videos. I make several videos along the way looking at individual aspects of the bike and the subjects of that bike. So I've got my first ride where I talk about, you know, the first impressions you get from a bike when you get on it. Then I did a video going to Goodwood where I took this through some country roads, went a bit of explore with it, did a little bit of range testing on that, took it filtering and really got to know the bike. As when this bike was lent to me, it had all the luggage on it. I've also done a review of the actual Energica luggage that goes with this bike because obviously if you're looking to buy an adventure bike like this, a Tora, uh, you are going to want all that extra storage. And I know you're going to say, wait a minute, an electric Tora, that makes no sense. We will get onto that. There's also my video talking about the modes and the UI on this bike, as in the user interface. That is something which did need an entire video to talk about because there was just so much to cover and so many aspects to it. And obviously, in this video, I will cover some of it, but I'll more glance over it. And the last video I did on this bike was the range test. And we will have to talk about the range because it is nuts. So as I say, if there's any aspect to this that I don't go into enough detail on, check out my other videos. I probably have gone into great detail. Right, I want to get riding because it's getting too hot standing still, but as a quick look over the bike, we've got 330mm Brembo discs with Brembo 4-pot piston calipers times 2, immense amount of braking. You do get adjustable suspension, I'm not entirely sure who this is made by, unfortunately. Again, Brembo brakes on the back. Your battery is in this section here, the charger is actually up here in the tank, and I'll show you in there in a second. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned I couldn't work out how to lift this seat off this bike, and I wondered if it was bolted down. It is, so you can't remove that. Your charging port is here. So you've got one cap for your Type 2 charger, and then you've got your second cap for the much larger charger that you use in stations, and this thing can charge really quite quickly. I personally think this bike looks absolutely great. I really do like the front end of it. It looks a bit like an owl. It looks like a bit like a smiley face. The seats on this is some sort of... Uh, if I say like suede, could is that like a or something? I don't know. That material is absolutely lovely. It's grippy, but not too grippy. It's they're firm seats, but comfy enough. Really, really, really comfortable seat. I doubt you'd want to change this if you go touring on it. Throttle, front brake, rear brake is on your right foot. There is nothing on your left foot and nothing on your left hand. Then when it comes to the switch gear, you've got high beam, low beam. This button is left, right, and press to give you access to changing stuff in the menus. Indicator is here and hazards. The way you put hazards on is you just press and hold it in the middle position. Horn, heated grips, uh, slider, which I've not tried using because it's 30 degrees currently, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> cruise control button, and that's the button to set the cruise control speed, which you can press and hold that and toggle up and down a mile an hour with that. There is also a little switch button on the back of here, which is used for going back in the menu. Uh, and it's also, if you press and hold it, opens this up, which is your little trunk frunk whatever you want to call it you may say hang on a minute why is why is there a big box inside here why is all the space taken up that is the charger now it's true it seems a bit silly to have that inside there but if they didn't have this open you would have lost all the space that goes around the outside and there is quite a lot of space in here like there is loads but you can't get anything particularly big in there because the opening is very narrow usb charger down there usb charger is also up here Screen can be adjusted from there to there. It's very little difference and I'm six foot four. So that literally is doing nothing for me other than putting air, more turbulent air in my face. So I keep it lower down. Then to quickly explain the screen, time, temperature, stuff to do with the menus. Obviously your trip and odometer, battery remaining, estimated range remaining, but that changes depending on what you've been riding on. Uh, traction control level, temperature of the bike. This is your current draw. So if you really get on the throttle, it's gonna show that almost like a rev counter. But if you only slowly get on it and get up to speed, that isn't going to use as much current because that's the way electrics work. The more you want, the more current it's going to need. If you go up slowly, it won't need as much. RPMs of the motor are here. This shows you your regen. So as you get into regen, it will go blue and show you that power is going back to the engine. Battery, sorry. Uh, then you've got your regen number, which can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. 0 is off. 3 is aggressive. 2 is good. Then you've got your modes, which is urban, sport, eco, wet, and then custom 1, 2, and 3. And the customs, you can change yourself. I believe you need the app to do that. Um, I haven't done any of that. But that allows you to basically turn traction control off and have unique setups that you just have to click down to get rather than have to individually select parts of it. But I say sport mode, B2, is the place to be on this bike. It just makes it feel good. This bike has got reverse if you need it. And it's a 260 kilo bike, so you might need it if you're trying to push it up a hill backwards or something. 
And you also have uh, a forward mode, which is only about five miles an hour, which is again for moving the bike around and getting around car parks and not worrying about hitting too much throttle because this thing's got a lot of throttle. All right, let's get going. Now electric bikes are silent, right? Nope. This one sounds great and oh my God, is it nice to get moving. It's so hot staying still. Woo. This is a 260 kilo machine. That is a heavy bike, but it is all down the bottom, very low. And it feels very much lighter than that when you're maneuvering it around on the bike. If you're pushing it around and you're having to lean it on, onto you a bit, yeah, you notice it's a heavy bike, but it is more at the bottom. But obviously the further that bike leans over, the more it's gonna start putting weight on you. Now I'm six foot four and I've found the comfort of this bike to be absolutely fantastic. I have way more room than I'd ever need. The seat is really comfy. I'm in a perfect place with my arms and my shoulders. The bars are swept back just the right amount. I'm sat upright. It's a really comfortable bike. You can do many, 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 many miles on this. And I have tried to do the range test, which I'll get onto because it's nuts. And I never had a problem with comfort. In fact, it's more comfortable on this than on a petrol because in, on a petrol in 30 degrees, you're being cooked by the bike. On this, there is no heat for the bike. I mean, all right, the, the motor will get a bit warm, so will the battery, but you don't feel the wafting heat like you do with the petrol. The suspension is really nice. It's firm, solid feeling, and it, but it does take out the, you know, the nasty bumps. I've had no real jarring in, out of the suspension on this. Other than that pothole, read the Goodwood video. Ugh. Strong wheels, I'll say that. Now, this has got OZ racing wheels, and I can tell you they're strong as hell. Let's not forget the get up and go. That was not full throttle. But now, I'm sat at a comfortable cruising speed. I would be in a higher gear normally, and if I wanted to accelerate, I would need to drop a gear or two. And on this, instant power whenever you want it so this has got a continuous output of 80 brake horsepower and a maximum output of 102 because that's the way that electrics work the torque figure given is between 115 newton meters and 900 now I'm going to assume that the 115 is at the rear wheel and the 900 was at the motor, literally on the shaft of the motor, because if it was 900 foot-pounds of torque to the rear wheel, I mean the traction control is just going to be going nuts the whole time. It's electronically limited to 112 miles an hour, which is a good thing for both your license and also the range. You don't want to go much faster than that, and the motor, everything. There's so many reasons why running a motor way within its capabilities is a good idea. You can push motors and electronics much further, but you massively shorten their life. So for this electric touring bike so far, comfort, controllability, ease of use, you know, all of these things are great. Power when you need it, right there. Huge brakes to stop when you want to. All great stuff. And then you're like, but wait, wait, there's an elephant in the room here, Spicy. This is an electric touring bike. How do you go touring on an electric? Well, let's talk about range and charging. The, the estimated ranges that energy could give is between 130 and about 250 to a charge, which you could probably imagine 130 is on the motorway and the 250 is really poodling around town. Well, that's what I thought. It's got to be like that. I did a range test on this bike where I just, rode, over several days, I rode it on the motorway, I rode it up and down national speed limits, up and down massive hills, I rode it around town. I just kept using it however I wanted in sport mode the whole time. No like hypermiling stuff, nothing like that, just having fun. I was expecting to get something like, you know, maybe 120 or 130 miles because of what they suggested. I got 170 miles range with 15% of the battery remaining. 170 miles to a single charge in sports mode, not urban or any of the lower power modes, in sports mode with my six foot four arse on it, 
being a child because I like R2-D2 noises and going on the motorway. I am literally gobsmacked. I don't know what to say. Now, during the week that I was using it, yes, the temperature has been quite high. It's been around 28 degrees, 27, 28 degrees most of the days. So yes, temperature he has something to do with it here that it might be getting a bit more because it's nice warm weather. Now I know people then say, well, you know, the other problem with electrics is when it gets cold, you're going to get a much lower range. Someone did a cross country trip on an Energica, uh, well, sorry, country, cross America trip on an Energica uh, Eva Rebelli and it took them like 72 hours and that was in some sub-zero conditions. So doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. And also, all the owners that I speak to who've got electrics and bring up the winter time basically say it's not that much of a difference, maybe 10% or something, maybe a bit less than that. Could be different between different people, obviously, but that's what I've heard so far. Unfortunately, I always get lent the electrics in the summer, so I can never do that winter comparison. What is interesting, though, is this, this is a big bike. This is a big adventure bike pretty much as big as all of the other big ones you see, but it doesn't feel anything like them. You know, I've ridden lots of adventures, you know, the Vistrom 1000s, 1050, uh, GS 1200s, you know, Triumphs, Tigers 1200s, 900s, you know, they're all big. There's so much more weight up the top on those that they always feel like an adventure bike, you know, like it's you dealing with that weight. On this, it really doesn't feel like that. motor is addictive but it's gone from being psychotic with ridiculous amounts of torque to 30 mile an hour really comfy really easy it's just so adaptable it just does so many things so well feels like a big bike yes but it feels more like a I, I don't know it's hard to say maybe a smaller adventure even though it weighs 260 kilos it's just the way that it hides that weight it's grunt that it's got it's uh I love it and when I say I love it I really 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 like this bike I've actually come to the conclusion now that I would want to own this bike and none of this has got anything to do with any green agenda as I've said before and it's got nothing to do with like this is what we need for the environment or any of that it is about a bike and its performance now there's no way of me explaining that to you in a few words but I can say watch my videos watch what I've done with it watch where I've been and it's just been such a good companion to exploring around and having a good laugh. If you charge this at home from about 15%, so it's on a two, three kilowatt charger, it will take about six and a half hours to get to 100%. Overnight, no problem at all. If you take this to a fast charger, it will charge the battery from zero to 80% in 40 minutes. Now, if you've just ridden 150 miles, you probably wouldn't mind sitting down for 40 minutes. You know, have some lunch for an hour. By the time you get back to the bike, you're back on full charge again. Obviously this isn't ideal and it doesn't beat petrols, but no one's asking it to. And also that's where I need to talk about the price. At no point am I or anyone else saying that you should go and buy one of these as a legitimately good financial decision versus a petrol. No one is saying that, or at least I'm not. What I'm saying is that as a bike, as a machine to own and ride, as a thing that exists, it is absolutely fantastic. I will go as far as to say this is one of the best bikes I've ever ridden for me. And I think people who watch my channel regularly, and have done for years, will get why. Obviously I'm tall, it's big and comfortable. It's the sort of adventure bike, it's got Larry fun to it, it's got childishness to it, because of the, you just... And very few petrol bikes I've ever ridden can pull like that from nowhere. So when I review the bike, I just accept that the person buying this has justified the cost. So I don't have to. When you make a comparison in the electric market for you know, how much this costs versus, versus what you get in return, it is pricey, yes, it is on the higher end. But for the tech that you get, 
and the bike that you get, it's actually pretty much in line with what you'd expect, if not very impressive. So it's the fact that you can just be on the brakes, off the brakes, and back on the throttle with one hand. It's just so easy to ride this thing. Oh, do you want to see how good these brakes are? I mean, it just, just. Mm. And you also get this unique experience with electrics, which is instead of scaring all the wildlife off in all the directions, you sort of pass through nature, kind of unseen, rather than blasting your way through and scaring everything off like a wake of animals running away from you. Ow! So I mean, you, you can almost at times forget that this weighs 260 kilos, and it feels a bit more like, like you know, just something so much more lighter and more nimble. But then you do that and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. You see, two of my favorite bikes now from the electrics, this for a big bike with, you know, that you could actually do distance on with fast charging and all that sort of stuff. My then second option is for just pure fun and I wouldn't try and go long distance necessarily on this. It would be more about, you know, one day fun rides. And that's the Zero FXE. Now the FXE is about 11 grand and I'd have loads of fun on that, but it can't do what this can do. And that, is going to be my conclusion because as i say i've covered the details in so much more depth in the other videos if you truly want to buy one of these then i think you'll be willing to watch those and if you're just interested in an overview that's probably answered every question you had if they can be this good now i can't wait to try the bikes in the future which are electric and also i hope that with that the price comes down I will criticise bikes wherever I can, and I have with this. In my video about modes and UI, I talked about how the, basically the back, forward, left control stick of trying to navigate the menu is just a bit finickety, and I don't really like it, and it could have been done smoother. But if that, if that is all I can complain about on this whole thing, I think that makes this a very good bike. Well, there you go. If you've got any more questions, ask in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and my series on this bike, please do hit the like button. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon because that is the only way this channel is possible and it's the only way that I can give you my full and honest thoughts on bikes. By being beholden to my audience and not the manufacturers means that I can just say whatever I like. Of course, a massive thank you goes to English Electric for lending me these bikes. I hope maybe you can get one or two more in this year if they've got something uh, later in the year. That would be cool. But if not, I'm sure next year we will be looking at the next models as they come out.